Hello guys, in this video we are going to implement a custom validation annotation in Spring Boot. We are going to create our own custom annotation and define our validation rules. At the end we can apply this custom validation the same way you can apply the built-in validations. For this, I have this Spring Boot project that has only one controller, the product controller, and then only one endpoint the endpoint for creating products. Over here, I have this product service with a method create. If I go inside here, we are not saving the data anywhere, but our focus is not on the service class. Our focus is the incoming request. For the incoming request, I have this create product DTO. That is just a class that defines, that helps us to map the, the incoming data. I have the name, that is the product name, and the price, which I choose to make a string. We are going to see why in this video. Now I'm using record instead of a class. Before we start implementing the custom validation, let's first understand the problem we are trying to solve. So let me start this project and head over to Postman to call this endpoint, the product endpoint. I will go to Postman and go to, I'll try to send a request here with empty body. If I send over this request with the empty body, you can see we get a response, although the data are incorrect, or should I say invalid. But the application did not complain. There is no validation error because there is no validation going on at this moment. Let's take one step by applying the built-in validation to the DTO. For example, I can come here and say, let's use not, not empty. Come down for price and do the same thing. Not empty. I will save that. I will go back and send the request. So this time we should, okay, I need to do one more thing. I will go to the controller and say that this should be valid to apply that validation. And for the class, that is the controller, I want to use validated up here. I will save and the project will restart. So this time our validation rules should apply. We are making use of the built-in validation rules. If I send this request again, you can see that this time we get the validation rules because we did not supply the required fields. There are many information here in this validation errors. If I go down here, you can see for, for the field name, it says that it must not be empty. The same thing for price. To reduce the number of items shown in that validation error, let me apply this error handler, my custom error handler. I will go back to Postman and send the request again. So this time it is clear what is going on. For price, it says that price must not be empty. And then for name, it says, it says that the name must not be empty. All right, let's apply the name and the price. Here I want to say iPhone 14 Pro Max. Then for the price, let's put something like 999.99. I will send the request one more time. You can see that this time the validation passes and we don't get the error. But let's change something here. We want the price to be a numeric value. Of course, that makes sense. But let me come here and put something else that is a string, but not a numeric value. When I send the request again, you can see that the validation passes. What we want to do is to check the field price to be sure that it is a numeric value. Whether it is a string or a number, it doesn't matter. It must be a numeric value. This brings us to our objective, to implement a custom validator. We are going to implement a custom validator that checks whether a value is numeric. Whether it is a number or string, doesn't matter, right? If it is a numeric string, that is still okay. For that, I will go into the shared package 
let me have another package let me call it validation by the way you can structure your project anyhow you want it doesn't matter in this package i want to create the annotation let's call it numeric numeric this will be of type annotation so i have to input the at symbol there this denotes that we are defining an annotation another way i could have done this is let me delete this guy i'll come back here and java class select annotation numeric to give us the same result the first thing i want to have here is message this is going to be the message that will be shown when the validation fails then i'm going to add two more things that are not really needed in this example but just to conform with the standards that you are going to see in many spring boot projects so here i'm going to have groups this is for validation groups we are not going to make use of it let me put a default here we're also going to have class this extends payload once again just to conform to the standards we say payload and let's have a default here the next thing we need to do is to tell where this annotation can be applied for that we say target and we want to apply this to field so we can say field element type dot field we want to apply to the dto to this field here the next one is retention at re retention this is to tell when this annotation can be accessed by the application for this i'm going to say at runtime and then we have at constraint constraint here we specify the validation constraint that is the class that is going to handle the actual validation for this annotation but we don't have that yet so i'm going to comment it out and finally let's add something that we don't really need but just for documentation just for java doc all right so we have everything we need here we are going to come back for the constraint in a moment the next thing we need to do now is to create the validation constraint class the guy that handles the actual validation for that i will go over to this package and we create a class let's call this numeric numeric con no validator numeric validator what we need to do here is to implement the class constraint validator so we say implements constraint validator let's implement the required methods this is going to have two methods the first method initialize this is going to run before the is valid so we can do initialization stuff here let me minimize this but instead of this annotation here we have our own custom annotation that we want to make use of and that is the numeric i'm going to say numeric numeric and numeric then in constraint validator generic type we also want to specify the annotation in this case numeric and the next thing is the input the type of data for the input let's say object because we don't know whether this input is going to be a string or a number or no or whatever so let's just use object here and then for is valid here we basically want to return true or false depending on whether or not the condition is met that means here you do all your validations and return true or false so what you have inside here is up to you let me come up here the first thing i want to check is whether this input the value is null so we say if value equals to null by the way this value refers to the input let me just call it input input of course 
we can say false. The condition is not met. Then the next thing we can check is whether this is a string. If it is a string, we want to check it differently. If, however, the thing is a number, we just want to return true. So for the string, I can say if input is instance of string, if it is of type string, that is first step. The next thing is to check whether that string is a numeric string. So we can say return. For this, I have a utility class that I'm going to make use of, string utils. This basically checks whether the input, whether the value is a numeric string. And we say input. The helper method is numeric expects a string, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So let me cast this to a string because at this point, we are sure that this is a string. So this is the method it does just basically checks whether the value is numeric string and that is it. I will go back to the validator. Then down here, we want to check whether the value is a number, but we can do the rest of the things in one line. Let me remove this guy. We just return that input is instance of number, not numeric, but number. So input can be a numeric string or a number for us to get true. Otherwise it is false. Now that we have our validator implemented, we can just go over to the annotation and specify the constraint. Over here, I'm going to say validated by, we say numeric validator.class. We will come back to this custom annotation to make some little changes. We're also going to see how we can pass additional parameters, whatever parameter we want to pass to our custom validator. But before that, let's go ahead and apply this custom validator in our DTO. So for create product DTO, I will come over here and say at numeric for the field price. This is asking me for message. So I'm going to provide message that says price must be numeric. I will save this and let's try to test it out. Over to Postman, I will try to send my request body is gone. iPhone 14 Pro and then the price 999.99. I will send the request, the validation passes. Now let me try to do what we did before. The price is going to be a string, but not numeric value. I will send the request. You can see that this time the numeric value is validated because of our custom validator. And of course with the error message, if I remove this and we send the request again, you will notice that this invalid value is going to pass the validation. Let me send the request. We get that. So our custom validation is working. Let's tweak things a little bit. The first thing I want to do is this. You notice that I cannot use this numeric validator without specifying the message. What we can do is to go back to this annotation and specify a default message to be used if we do not supply any message. It is as simple as coming here and saying default to be, let's say the input must be numeric. With the default message in place, we can choose to override it here or simply remove it to use the default. I'm going to test this again. Head over to Postman and send the request. You can see we get the default message. The next thing I want to talk about is how to pass additional parameters. Let me go back to the annotate annotation. Here we can see we have message here. Let me quickly show you something. If I come over to this constraint and try to see what is inside numeric, 
numeric dot. You can see we have that message, we have the groups, we have the payload. So those three values, these three items here, we can access in the constraint. It means that we can easily add additional information here. For example, let me have a string, let's say some parameter, whatever you want to call this. You can also give it default like you have seen before, but let me remove the default in this example. Now for the DTO, this is going to require that I supply some parameter. Let's say some value. Then in the in this validator, what I can do is let me have private string some parameter. And then inside initialize, I can say this dot some parameter will be equal to numeric dot some parameter. So this is how we can pass and ac have access to additional parameter, whatever parameter you want to pass to your annotation and make use of in the custom validator. All right, guys, in this video, we have seen how to implement a custom validation annotation in Spring Boot. You can dive deep into the official documentations to learn more about all this. I hope this makes sense. Until next time, happy coding.